I hope everybody's doing well. Obviously, this is a unique situation in 2020. Uh, this is the DAV's 2020 Voluntary Services Program uh, Virtual Salute Overview. Um, I'm John Kleinies, the National Voluntary Services Director. Uh, I work very closely with the entire team, more specifically Ron Manor and Katie Deschler. Uh, we are responsible for all of DAV's transportation network, the DAV's VAVS, that's Bayou Voluntary Services Programs, local veterans assistance programs specific to DAV, the Jesse Brown Memorial Youth Scholarship Program, which encourages young men and women to volunteer their time. We recognize uh, outstanding volunteers every year by awarding the George H. Seal Award. We also uh, partner with the Gary Sinise Foundation and Boulder Crest Veterans Retreats to conduct mentoring retreats multiple times throughout the year. We also have a celebrity visit program, an initiative that uh, we send uh, celebrities to hospitals to visit patients while they're undergoing care. And our two largest endeavors are our adaptive sports programs. Uh, we co-host uh, the, or excuse me, we co-present co -present the uh, National Disabled Veterans Winter Sports Clinic and the National Disabled Veterans Tea Tournament. Both of those events take place once a year. Uh, the Winter Sports Clinic takes place in Snowmass, Colorado, and the Tea Tournament takes place just south of Iowa City, Iowa. Uh, here's the rest of the team. Elise Brown is the Assistant to the Voluntary Services Director. She specifically handles um, events scheduling for myself, Ron, and Katie, as well as uh, responsibility over the celebrity visits and the Jesse Brown Scholarship payments. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with Connie Kinney. Her primary role is the DAV transportation network from start to finish. That's when we go to order our vehicles, she keys those requisitions. Uh, we then uh, follow the delivery of those vehicles, the decaling of those vehicles, uh, and pick up or shipment of those vehicles to various spots across the entire country. Dylan Archibald is one of our newest employees. He, uh, he sp specifically focuses on the LVAP program, Local Veterans Assistance Program, and he ensures that all hours uh, and reports are into our system so we can have better accountability for what uh, DAV does in the local community. Shelby Buckler is another new uh, new addition to the voluntary services team. Uh, she works very closely with Dylan as well as it relates to the local veterans assistance program and the importance of reaching out to everybody and getting those hours. Odie Hall has been with us for quite some time. Odie is uh, primarily responsible for all DAV, VAVS chairpersons, representative positions, as well as handling all nominations as it relates to the Jesse Brown Memorial Youth Scholarship and the George Seal nominations. So uh, our next person is Pam Henning. Uh, her primary responsibility is keeping our DAV transportation information up to date. Uh, that would include all the reporting as well as updating our HSC directories so we have a great point of contact for individuals when people request transportation to and from their medical appointments. And last but not least is Tina Warndorf, another new employee for a voluntary services program. Her primary point of contact or primary role, excuse me, is uh, the volunteerforveterans.org initiative, uh, which we launched two years ago. Uh, we specifically work with local corporate and groups, uh, local corporations and groups who are interested in volunteering for, for veterans. And uh, she is our primary person who handles that. Uh, this is the National Headquarters Voluntary Services Team. Next, we're going to talk about the Jesse Brown Memorial uh, Scholarship Enhancements. Uh, earlier this year, uh, pre-COVID-19, uh, we went through and did a total re refresh of the uh, excuse me, the scholarship page. Uh, this includes, uh, you can go to DAVScholarships.org, or you can go to DAV.org, click on Volunteer, and drop down a Jesse Brown uh, Scholarship. This whole page was refreshed and is now as, very, is as automated as we can make it. It is very inviting and not just for potential people looking to apply, but for people submitting applications on, on others' behalfs. Uh, we will continue to refresh the images annually, but DAB is very proud to award $75,000 a year of scholarships uh, each and every year. Uh, as you can see, there's an Apply Now button. And we have a, a video that will run uh, each year. We'll replace that video with the top uh, recipient. All deadlines are February 28th of the following year. So this year's application process is open as we speak, and the deadline will end on February 28th, 2021. It's important that we, we, we talk about a couple things as it relates to the scholarship. Anybody who volunteers in the name of DAV under the age of 21 and accumulates 100 hours in their lifetime is eligible for this scholarship. I know we're in a unique situation right now where volunteerism in control environments such as the VA medical facilities have been put on hold 
We do have some youth that are volunteering in select locations uh, that are capable of being involved with minimal exposure. But if you're if you're a youth and you're volunteering in your community by planning a, a, a veterans memorial or a veterans area in your town, a, a cemetery, um, helping a veteran neighbor in need, a better grandparent in need, a, a better mom and dad in need, and you accumulate 100 hours through our local veterans assistance program, you're eligible for the scholarship. I would encourage you to get out, get involved, and find any way that you can get, uh, give back to a veteran in your community. Once you achieve these 100 hours, you could submit your application uh, to be considered for the 2021 Jesse Brown Memorial Youth Scholarship. As you can see on the screen here, it's easy, easy. You'll hit the apply now button and then you're going to go through an automated process, which we're going to take a look at here real quickly. But we want to make sure that we note uh, on this screen that it indicates that a um, document of what volunteering means to me must be submitted in order to complete the uh, application or the nomination process. So we want to make sure that everybody knows what all they're going to need before they start entering their information in an effort to apply for the scholarship. And again, worth noting, the scholarship deadline ends on Feb February 28th of the following year. Um, obviously, there are quite a few things that are going to be required, but we did uh, some really neat stuff here. Obviously, the red asterisks are things that are required, so we're going to need the volunteer's name, date of birth, their address and phone number. We added some radio buttons to make it a little bit easier if you're self-nominating or you're nominating your grandchild or a neighbor that you know uh, for this very worthy scholarship. It's going to ask you for specific information, months or years that you volunteered. Just put in the number of months, put in the number of years. Uh, again, the radio button is there for you. Uh, if the nominee has volunteered in the past and you select the other button, an additional box will appear and it's going to ask for some uh, of your activities, club that you're involved. If you're a member of the FFA or you're a member of the National Honor Society or, you, or, you, or you're doing something in your community, you run track uh, and you, you maintain in a 4.0, but this is a good opportunity for you to put some, some of that additional information. We just don't look at what the students are doing um, in the community. We want to look at what they're doing overall uh, for, for individuals to volunteer their time and continue to maintain a great GPA and be involved in other activities, maybe at their church or taking care of kids in an or uh, you know, uh, transitioning uh, through their, uh, adoption agencies or something like that. We want to know all that because that really paints a big picture of the overall nominee. Obviously, if um, we ask certain questions, you know, how your volunteering impacts veterans and patients. Um, what do you do about morale with other veterans or other volunteers? Are you bringing more folks into the fold of volunteering? These uh, op boxes four and five are the opportunity for you to do this, uh, or four specifically. Five uh, talks about bringing new volunteers into the fold. We hope that uh, you're, you're so energized with volunteering that you want to tell all your friends about it. Uh, this is one of DAB's best kept secrets or scholarship program. Uh, this year, we, we only received I think it was 47 nominations for the scholarship um, out of over 200 VA facilities, 52 DAV departments across the country. We do feel that uh, getting involved in the community is something that is worthwhile and contagious. So to see kids bring more people into the fold for, uh, is, is very cool. Uh, we also have a different uh, on boxes six and seven, some, some different areas for you to add additional commentary as it relates to what the youth is doing in their community. Uh, so please fill those out. If it doesn't apply, you can skip through it because it's not a required box. But please keep in mind, as much information as you can give us makes it a uh, easier process or, excuse me, a more difficult process for our committees to go through and screen all these, but they really enjoy it and they find it to be very worthwhile. Again, uh, we have multiple areas for you to attach files. So if you choose to attach some pictures of your volunteering. Obviously your essay is required in order to finalize this process. Uh, anything that you feel is additional supporting documentation, please feel free to add that. But note that what you see on the screen is all that you have. So there are three, six, seven opportunities for you to attach additional information. Once it's done, you hit submit. It's really that easy. It can take uh, as little as uh, 30 minutes to submit something if you've already written your essay. Um, so we're encouraging and asking each and every one of you to continue to talk about the scholarship program and encourage people 
to get involved and volunteer their time. And for those of you who uh, still have a problem dealing with stuff on the computer, you can contact us. We do have a paper application and it mirrors exactly what is on my uh, we're really pushing people to use the internet format because it's easier for us to download everything a little it's a lot more legible sometimes uh, but if you do need it please feel free to reach out to us we will send you a paper form but at all costs we're asking people to please submit them electronically that's a very neat process and it helps our committee uh, when they go through to read these uh, applications and nominations um, uh, very much easier and, and much cleaner Talking about volunteerforveterans.org, uh, our newest product that uh, DAV is, is placed out um, for outward involvement into the community. Um, we did some cleaning up of this as well, trying to make it a little bit easier, remove some stuff. Um, but it's imperative that we continue to talk about this platform. Um, I personally believe that this is the new DAV transportation network. It's easy uh, to get the younger generation involved. I would encourage people to go through and build profiles and volunteer for veterans. If you're a veteran who has a need, please build a profile. What we're finding is we have more volunteers than we have veterans who have needs. If we can get more veterans in there, we can, we can work to achieve uh, helping more veterans in the community. Uh, this is also a great platform that uh, Tina uses daily to engage major corporations to let them know of volunteer needs in their areas. Uh, we're reached out to by a lot of large entities who are interested in giving back to veterans. And this is the direction we're trying to take them because it's very clean, streamlined. We get everybody's information in. And once you build the profile and you do the activity in this process, you automatically get credit for your LVAP hours um, into our, our system. Again, there's been several updates made to this product. Uh, if you log in or haven't logged in a while, we'd ask that you go, go back and take a look at it. Continue to check and find out if there's needs in your areas. Um, anytime a new occurrence pops up, you should receive an email that tells you, hey, there's a new opportunity within the radius in which you have selected on your profile. And hopefully we'll get more veterans to help us build their profiles and put their needs in. Now, these are basic needs. Uh, we're not doing major construction or major renovations to individuals' homes. We're looking at doing uh, tasks that uh, are sensible tasks, right? Uh, mowing grass, maybe fixing some boards on a deck. Uh, we have a lot of chapters and a lot of departments and a lot of individuals who go out and build ramps because they have them aluminum ramps that they can set up or they build with wooden ramps, which are very noble processes. The picture on here on the far right is a veterans, uh, is a group volunteering at a farm uh, specifically for veterans who wanna become veteran farmers. Uh, this is a great, another tool for youth to get involved. So please visit volunteerforveterans.org Build a profile, let us know of some things that can be done to make your life a little bit easier because maybe you have an injury or a condition that prevents you from mowing your grass or getting up on a ladder and cleaning out your gutters or heck, maybe you have a light bulb that needs to be changed and you can't reach it because you have a neck injury or something like that. So um, check it out, volunteerforveterans.org. Again, here's some great links uh, with some short training videos <clears throat> that will help you understand how to register how to add an opportunity, how to complete an opportunity, search for opportunities. And uh, we did a nice little fun video that uh, we've shown quite a few times. A lot of people have called us and asked us for it, uh, Ron and I doing uh, some stuff um, to make it a little fun and entertaining uh, with the cat and um, falling off the ladder, so on and so forth. But check those out, they're out there for you. These links, uh, this will be posted on the members only portal and we'll have opportunities for you to go, go back and get this. Uh, Use it to your content. Maybe you could take this to your local chapters and show this to everybody if you're the volunteer liaison for the chapter or you're the um, department LVAP person, whatever your title is, please go out and share these opportunities, volunteer opportunities and resources that DAV's put a lot of time and money in. Um, you know, there are a lot of veterans who need help. If you have any questions or anytime there's a concern or, or something's going on, you don't understand it, reach out to us at DAVS at DAV.org or give us a call. Uh, we're here to help you and I, I hope that you find us as, as helpful as we want to be. Uh, the importance of reporting. All monthly reports for VAVS, which are the Form 50, the HSC forms, the Form 40, and the LVAP Form 460 are due on the 5th of each month. So an example of that is January's reports are due on February 5th. It's imperative that you get us the reports as soon as possible. Um, the importance of reporting in a timely manner affects a variety of things. 
the, appro the approval for your transportation network vehicles at the end of the year when you ask. If hours aren't reported and we don't have those, it is difficult for us to justify uh, allowing the department or a chapter to apply for a grant in, uh, for assistance to purchase the vehicles. All of the hours that DAV donates throughout the year are count as contributed services. So it's imperative that we accurately report these hours to Congress and watchdog groups who are constantly asking what DAV does. For those of you who are very active in the organization, you'll hear the commander at the midwinter conference and the national convention and all of the, Mark, the national adjutant, the executive directors, Barry Jezinowski and Randy Reese report of all of these hours. LVAP is another essential program it allows us to be involved in the community and it makes a great name for DAV and those who are looking for assistance and raises awareness for our war activities and mission. So it's important that you report your hours to us in a timely manner. Unreported or untimely reporting causes a delay in processing of all of our programs, more specifically the DAV transportation network. We, at the end of the year, we have to go through and we have to close out the year and then we're looking at all of the applications, all of the uh, grant requests for, for vehicles. And if, I, if we go and look at reports and we see that a multitude of hours are missing or miles or veterans aren't being transported, it does not bode well for justifying allowing a grant for a new vehicle. It's a very substantial purchase and, and, and the Charitable Service Trust uh, is glad to do that, but we need to make sure that reporting is done in a timely manner. That goes back to AFRs and everything that you have to do in order to keep your chapter and your department in good standing. Obviously, transportation network hours are based on the VA's fiscal year. So you have September 1 to October 30. Um, so once, or excuse me, October 1 to September 30, I got that backwards, forgive me. Uh, so it's important that if you're an HFC or a VAVS rep or DEP, and you're helping to report those hours, get those to us as quick as possible. It helps us shut out our year and it helps us ensure that our reports are accurate. Something new this year is the LVAP program used to be done on a calendar year, but in a, in a, in a better effort to align what we do as an organization, we decided to shift that to a membership year. So from now on, from July 1 to June 30, is when your hours are gonna be counted for, for LVAP. So going forward, uh, July 1st of 2020 through June 30, 2021, when we get to the National Convention, we'll recognize the, the top LVAP division winners as such. Please get those hours into us no later than July 15th. Every year we have a crunch on people sending a lot of them at the very last minute. It's difficult and tough for us to keep up with, but we're glad to do it. But we're asking and imploring you to please submit those hours by July 15th. In 2019, uh, through our LVAP program, we did a little more than 2.3 million hours and had almost 90, a little over 9,100 volunteers. Uh, at this point in time, uh, I'd like to recognize the 2019 LVAP winners, which were announced at our midwinter uh, conference in February, but Division I Virginia achieved nearly 400,000 hours. They're rock stars in the country. They're doing a great job. Keep up the great work, Virginia. Oklahoma, Division II, uh, they've become a repeat offender here. They're doing a great job. They're doing wonderful things, very innovative. They've hit nearly 250,000 hours. South Carolina Division Three, great job, South Carolina, uh, a little over 113,000 hours. Division Four, Nebraska, again, great job, Nebraska, a little over 61,000 hours. And Division Five, North Dakota, with nearly 70,000 hours. Great job to all of you guys. You did a great work. Please keep note of the division change, or excuse me, the change in reporting for LVAP. I have talked to some of you. Um, if, uh, if you change divisions through, through membership, you're going to change divisions in our LVAP. Everything is gonna align based off what's in the membership system going forward, okay? So next on the agenda is our new monthly reporting forms. Each and every one of you should have received a notice back in May of the new forms. They're all in an Excel spreadsheet and they're designed to implement it to our new CRM that's scheduled to go live in a few months. We ask you to use these forms, send them to us in electronic format, uh, if you did not get the forms, feel free to email us at DAVS at DAV.org. We'll get those uh, forms back out to you. We do have a webinar scheduled to take place on September 23rd from 2 to 3.30 Eastern time. We'll be sending out a registration email a month prior and a follow-up reminder two weeks and one week prior to the webinar. For those of you who are involved with this process, we'll ask that you please 
sign up for the webinar, take advantage of that opportunity, ask all the questions that you have. Uh, there, uh, the next few slides we're going to talk about are going to go through some of those changes, and I'm going to hit some of those points. So you're going to hear this again in September, but it's it's a, it's of utmost importance that you utilize these forms in an effort to prevent errors and accuracy uh, and allow for more accuracy in the reporting. So the LBAP form, Form 60, we've gone through and changed it. I want to first make it a make it very clear. There's a lot of information asked for on here. However, all fields are required except middle name email, phone number, and date of birth. If the volunteer desires to give us all that, the more information, the better. That way we can update the record. They, those items, again, middle name, email, phone, and date of birth are not required, but if the volunteer would like to share that information, we ask that you get that information and share it with us. You see the link here, here on this slide. You can download the form, do what you need to do. The biggest point of, of concern here is to Tell us what activity that volunteer has done, whether that's chapter service officer work, maybe it's a, uh, a forget-me-not drive, a department service officer work, uh, those benefit protection team leaders in your grassroots legislative initiatives, homeless stand-downs, local veterans assistance program, maybe you have a, a, a National Guard demobilization that's taking place, or you're providing direct veterans assistance. Please make sure you put the job description to what you've done it's, that is of the utmost importance. The Form 50, which is for VABS monthly reporting. Again, I'm going to say this every slide. All fields are required except middle name, email, phone number, and date of birth. You don't have to give us that, but the more information we get, the better off or for making sure we put the right information for the right person. If the volunteer chooses to give us that information, please ensure that we get it. If they don't want to give it to us, that is absolutely fine. We just need a name and again, the job description, what have they done? Please select that. If they were doing VABS hours for DAV um, in a facility, we need to know that they're gonna be credited to DAV. The same for the, for the DAV auxiliary. Please put the job description of what type of volunteering they're doing and who those hours are to be credited to so we can put them into our new CRM or our new pro or our process that we use today called DAV 360. This is the HSC reporting form, form 40. Again, as you see, there's a link to this to this uh, form. Again, I wanna say it, all fields are required except for middle name, email, phone number, and date of birth. Again, if a volunteer likes to give us that information, we'll take that information. We can update it into our CRM as it comes in on a monthly basis. Again, it's imperative that you put your job description, whether you're doing transportation network, maybe you're not doing transportation network, but you're doing something for the transportation program. Hospital service coordinator hours that are being done where a hospital service coordinator is not being paid. Uh, transportation network non-driver hours if you're doing something to help the HSC in their capacity. It's imperative that you put down what you're doing on this form so we can make sure we put it for the right breakdown of all of these different opportunities that DAV is trying to track for the volunteer program. Again, we appreciate your willingness to, to use this form and help us clean up our process to make sure we have accurate data. But as always, please, Please log into the seminar webinar schedule to take place on September 23rd and participate in it. Ask your questions. Again, there are some things that are not required, but if a volunteer would like to give us that information, we'd like to get it. Educating and, promote, and promoting our programs, the voluntary services program, DAV programs. It's important that you work with your local leaders. Obviously, we get a calls every day. I need help recruiting drivers, and we get that. It's we understand it's the, the difficult difficult process. But on the ground, we have, you know, on our website, we have a recruitment tool. Uh, if you start working with your local VA leaders there and, and try to establish a process, communicate, work with them, talk with them, tell them what you're wanting to do. They want those volunteer drivers. They want more volunteers because that creates better access to healthcare services that the VA is promising the men and women who've worn a uniform. So contact your local news station. Let them know what's going on. Tell them, hey, this is our program. This is what we do. All of this stuff is a resource and it's on DAV.org. Pull it up, share it, it's fill in the blank. You can send it to the local media. And if you need help, contact us. We'll, we'll, we'll share that stuff with you, get you where, where you need to be and tell you what are some of the best practices. Volunteering is a worthwhile endeavor and we encourage everybody to look at donating one day a month. If you can commit to one day a month and you find out you have more availability, you're likely to bring, bring more folks in. You'll start volunteering more and you'll find it to be the most rewarding thing that you've ever done.
talked about the volunteer driver recruitment. So there's a couple of great things that are up here. So the Department of Oklahoma, who I talked about on the LVAP, has done started a program called the Drive a Hero program. They worked very closely with all VA hospitals in Oklahoma, uh, the directors of the facilities, and they did a one-day recruitment and onboarding process with volunteers. It took a lot of legwork, but they did it, and they've had huge success. So um, that's one opportunity. Reach out to reach out to them. I'm sure, certain they'll be glad to share that success with you. Uh, we've had some success in Minnesota with with talking to local news agencies. We did a drive ride along, and within the week they had uh, there was 67 new volunteer drivers. We did it in Minnesota. We've done it in Portland. There's a YouTube video on this link that you can check out and see the story and see how that unfolded and what it does as far as calling people in to become a volunteer driver. To be a driver, all you have to do is possess a valid, drive, valid driver's license, be insurable, and be over the age of 21, all right? So calling all folks to consider becoming a driver, uh, excuse me, you also have to pass a physical, a basic physical. Please consider becoming a volunteer driver. It is a worthwhile endeavor. To honor DAV Century of Service, we, we kicked off the 100 Acts of Honor campaign. Uh, we've seen stuff coming in through DAV social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're asking any initiative out there that's being done to honor veterans um, and honor DAV to be shared with us. So if you're doing something to become, you know, a uh, veterans memorial, you're cleaning up a veteran's house. Uh, we had a, uh, a piece of the World Trade Center bought in to be casted for the Centennial Bell. All those things are acts of honor. Anything that can be done out there to, to help improve the life of a veteran or raise awareness for veterans, please share that with us through our social media. You can do that at on um, Facebook and LinkedIn at DAV or Twitter at DAVHQ and Instagram. If you can't do it that way, send us an email with what you did and, a, and a, maybe a link to what's done and we'll share that with our communication staff and get that posted. Please continue to help promote this. We're hoping to wrap up 2020 with more than 100 acts of honor to, to, to honor DAV Century of Service. The Adaptive Sports Programs, which we talked about, uh, the 2020 events, the Winter Sports 150 Tournament were canceled due to COVID-19. And we're looking forward to returning in 2021. Uh, the Winter Sports Clinic is scheduled to take place March 28th through April 2nd of 2021 in Snowmass, Colorado. And the tea tournament is scheduled to take place September 12th through the 17th of 2021 in Iowa City, Iowa. If you're interested in becoming a, a, a sponsor or would like to donate to these events, please reach out to us uh, at 888-480-6786, press option five, or shoot us an email at VABS at DAV.org or send an email to Ron, myself, or Katie, and we'll get that information to where we need, need, need it to be. And we appreciate the support of all VAB entities, chapters, departments, auxiliary units, juniors. Um, you, you, you guys really have stepped up and helped us make both of these events a success. And we, we appreciate and couldn't do this without you. That concludes the uh, voluntary services presentation. I hope you find this information informative. Uh, again, it will be available to you to use at your uh, discretion. Um, if there's anything that we can do to help you out, reach out to us at DAVS at DAV.org or give us a call again at 888-480-6786 or email us directly. All of our email addresses and phone numbers are at the very front of this slide uh, for each individual. Uh, we could, again, thank you for everything that you do. Keep up the great work. And uh, we look forward to uh, getting through this. We will get through this together and we look forward to 2021 and continuing on this 101 years of service. Thank you, everybody.